Goodbye, good uh, last count, Corla. More than 5,000 pal Palestinians killed, more than 2,000 Palestinian children dead, more than 1,000 Palestinian women dead, more than 15,000 Palestinians injured, and nearly 2 million Palestinians displaced. This Tishuk the depressing toll of human suffering inflicted on the people of Gaza over the last two weeks. The people of Ireland were rightly outraged and condemned the horrific attacks on Israeli civilians by Hamas on October the 7th. However, there is no justification for the onslaught raining down on Gaza by Israel's military machine. Israel's bombardment is not defence. The killing of more than 2,000 innocent children is not defensive. And we've all seen the pictures, pictures of inconsolable parents carrying the broken bodies of their dead children. The film of a heartbroken little girl crying out in search for her mama following an airstrike. The footage of a traumatised little boy covered in dust and debris asking a doctor, am I still alive? Gazan parents are writing names on their children's legs and abdomens so they can be identified after an airstrike. As a mother, I can't imagine how that feels. To write your, name, your child's name on their body while they are warm and breathing so that you might know them when they are cold and still. No, this is not defence, this is a massacre. Yeah. A brutally violent, offensive military campaign. Hundreds of schools in Gaza have been destroyed. Its health infrastructure obliterated. The hospitals that remain functioning are quickly running out of fuel to keep generators going. As food runs out, the people of Gaza face starvation. As clean water runs out, they face the prospect of cholera. And as they run out of the basics needed to survive, they are trapped with no way out. And now Israel assembles hundreds of thousands of troops and tanks on the border in preparation for a ground invasion, for more destruction, for more slaughter, for more Palestinian children dead. Kahi Israel stopakur lenamaru in Gaza. Ni mor the kyanari yorapuk sus kogi umlon loyrok a elif. He shook the people of Gaza stand now at the threshold of annihilation. And nobody can say they didn't see, nobody can say they didn't hear, nobody can say that they didn't know. This is happening in full sight of the world. Calling for a humanitarian pause isn't good enough. Pausing the slaughter to facilitate aid into Gaza only to allow the slaughter resume is a most perverse interpretation of humanitarianism and cannot be the international community's response. The only truly humanitarian action is a full and immediate ceasefire and then aid delivered to Gaza without the threat of attack. Ireland can and must be to the fore of this call as agreed by the Dáil last week. So Taoiseach, at the meeting of the European Council on Thursday, will you tell European leaders that they must make this call for an unequivocal full ceasefire? Will you tell them that they must demand Israel stop its slaughter of the Palestinian people? I will attend that meeting um, and I will do my best at that meeting uh, to, the, to do the best that I can uh, to persuade uh, the European uh, Union and the European Council to adopt a common position. It may not be possible for us to adopt a common position. Uh, we don't have a single foreign policy across the European Union. We all have our independent foreign policies, which I know is something you support, but I'll certainly do the best I can uh, to persuade um, our colleagues and all the European countries to agree a common position. Um, I, I won't, won't tell them, Deputy. Um, that's a very particular approach. It might be the approach that you would adopt as Taoiseach, uh, to attend the meeting, point the finger, tell people off, and do a press conference afterwards. That's not how you do this job. It's not how you actually get things done in international affairs. 
you have to build relationships, you have to build partnerships, you have to build alliances, you have to develop colleagues, uh, and you try to use your powers of persuasion. And that's particularly the case for a small country like Ireland, which is not a major economic power or a major political power. We use, it, we use the power of persuasion, reputation, contacts. That's how we do things and that's how we, how we achieve things. What we have seen uh, in the past two weeks in Gaza uh, is a uh, dreadful um, expression of violence. Uh, not just in Gaza, also in Israel, uh, where 1,400 civilians were killed, um, Israeli citizens, citizens from other states. Let's not forget one of our own citizens killed by Hamas in Israel. Uh, her family come from County Leash. And since then, um, terrible violence um, and terrible aggression in Gaza, where over 5,000 people have been killed. Uh, very many of them uh, are children. And we have our own citizens there uh, who are particularly concerned for, including um, uh, a, a young, young boy you may, may have seen on TV last night who, who's there uh, on an extended holiday with his family uh, and we're very keen to see that we can get our um, passport holders out as quickly as possible. Uh, we're calling for a de-escalation. Um, there is not a military solution to this conflict which has been going on now for more than 75 years. Uh, we're calling for a de-escalation. Uh, we fear that it will spread uh, to other parts of the Middle East uh, and indeed may express itself on the streets of Europe in terms of uh, violent acts, particularly violent acts, acts of Islamic terrorism. We've already seen two examples of that already uh, in, um, uh, in Belgium uh, and in France. Uh, so we're calling for a ceasefire, a humanitarian ceasefire that will allow aid to get into the Gaza Strip, uh, that will allow um, foreign passport holders and refugees to get out. Um, we're calling for all sides to observe that ceasefire uh, and I hope we all agree on that. Um, and that's, that's the view that I'll be taking to the European Council uh, later in the week. We're also calling on Hamas to, re to give up all of the hostages. It's not acceptable to take hostages. Uh, they should return all of their hostages to their homes and they should lay down their arms. They are a terrorist organization, not a state. And again, I hope you'll agree uh, with that call. Uh, and thirdly, while we accept and agree that Israel has the right to defend itself and to go after Hamas, the way it does it matters. It has to do it only in accordance with international humanitarian law uh, and that is important for its own future security and I believe its own international relations. Well, Taoiseach, your, your party has been in government now 12 years. Uh, you're now in your second stint as uh, Taoiseach. Uh, obviously, uh, I, one can only assume that you've used that time to, as you claim, build relationships so you might inform us who our allies are on this uh, question. What level of persuasion have you exercised? What work have you done outside of the European Council to talk to European partners and international partners with the message of full, complete ceasefire by all parties? But remember that uh, the Israeli onslaught is absolutely ferocious. This is one of the largest military machines um, in the world. And the facts are, are they not Taoiseach, that Israel is not exercising a right to defense within the boundaries of international law. You identified yourself collective punishment by Israel. You identified that correctly as a clear breach of international law. So when you speak to our European partners at the Council, will you also share with them the view, the reality that Israel is acting outside of international law? The answer is, of course, not a military one. It is a political and diplomatic one. But Taoiseach, you may say that we are small and therefore ineffectual. I say that Ireland may be small, but we can have a very, very big influence on this question. Deputy, we, we are small, we're far from ineffectual. Uh, we're a country that uh, punches well above its weight uh, in uh, international relations. Uh, so I didn't say what you said, the misleader strikes again, uh, putting words in other people's mouths and stating things uh, that are not true, Deputy. Um, and if you ever have the opportunity to attend a European Council meeting, whether as a minister or perhaps even as Taoiseach, you'll understand that there are 27 different member states and they all have their different perspective. Uh, our attitude to the conflict in Israel and Palestine is very much guided by our own historical experience. But you need to understand that people's attitudes in other countries might also be guided by their historical experience, uh, particularly uh, in relation to the events in the 1930s and the 1940s. And you have to be sensitive to that 
not pig-headed about it. And that's an important, important the, 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 way, the way, you, way you conduct yourself um, uh, in, in international affairs. Uh, we've been very active on this, extremely active. Um, the Thornista and I, meetings, phone calls, huge numbers. And we were instrumental in making sure that the European Council statement issued last Sunday uh, was balanced and was not one-sided. Uh, and we were instrumental in that along with no, a number of other countries uh, in the European Union. And Deputy, we do have friends and we do have allies and we build up those contacts and build up those, those relationships all the time. Okay. And among you, our friends are the Palestinians, by the way. Uh, and they would recognise that, as do all the, all the other Arab Thank countries. You, My fear, Deputy, is your approach, if you were a Taoiseach, we're is that you would not make friends, no. you would make enemies. Taoiseach, enemies in the European uh, Union, Taoiseach, you'd make enemies over, of the United States, and our country time. would suffer as a result, and the Palestinians we're, would gain we're, nothing. We're way over time.